I'm Kevin Goodman. It's my wife, Stacy. We're the Goodman team with EXP. We want to thank you for, for tuning in today. So let me just get started. And uh, we're talking about trust today. In real estate, trust is your currency. How solid is your client confidentiality game? That's right. So what are you doing to protect your, your clients? And, and we, you know, we're, if you're a client watching this and, and uh, you want to know what we're doing, feel free to, to reach out to us and, and we'll share how we protect your information. So information in, in real estate and in, in negotiations and, and in, in the process is, is it's super important to keep it confidential. If you don't, you, you could lose uh, important personal information. You could lose, when I say lose, I mean, you, you, somebody else can, can garner this information and use it for reasons that aren't becoming the key client that are, that are harmful to your client. Right. So that being said, you, you got to have some policies in place that, that help protect that, your kind of client information. It could hurt your client's uh, ability to negotiate. Right. So whenever you're, your um, agents, whenever you're doing your buyer's rep or your listing agreement, I know everybody just, especially if you've been in the business for a while, that's just, you just go through the, the, the contracts with your clients and that's, you know, that's a paragraph that you talk to them about confidentiality. I always stress with my clients that confidentiality is a key with me. Like it, it outlasts the listing. It outlasts the, the um, buyer's rep agreement. Um, I'm, I'm really protective over my clients, uh, confidential information. I, I'm very protective during negotiations. Um, I make sure that I have permission to share almost everything. So that's, that's right. And, and we don't share between each other unless we're sharing the clients and we're meeting personally together with, with a client. We don't give away information to each other. No. Less, less anybody outside our our uh, our office, which we are our office. Right. And I trust him mostly. So, and if I wouldn't share my client's confidential information with him, that's, I'm hoping that that says a lot about me. No pillow talk here. No. That being said, there, there's other ways that we, ha we, we safeguard our client's information. One, we don't ever, ever, ever collect any information such as driver's license and social security numbers. No, like you don't want that sent to you on an email or a text or anything. Like, I don't want that information. Yeah, even, even if it's a, a rental or a lease, you don't, you don't want to, you don't want to have to protect that information as an agent. No, you give them those links and you have them send it directly to the people that need it. You don't need it. That's right. Yeah. So that that's part of our policy. Right. If I've, I've had it come over before and I delete it immediately and tell my people don't send that to me. Yep. Yeah. So, so you can, you can, if you're in that type of business where you, where you're doing lots of rentals and you, and you want to, to have, uh, the ability to, to collect that information, you should invest in cybersecurity so that, so that you can have some safe links to, for clients to send you that type of information. Yep. At, it is our policy at the Goodman team with EXP that we don't collect any of that type of information. We do not. If the title company needs it, it goes to a secure link with the title company. If a rental office needs it, it goes to a secure link with the rental, rental office. We don't collect it. And that's, that's how we safeguard it. That is how we safeguard it. Um, when it comes to email, text, or anything, we just don't collect that information. So, and, and as far as <clears throat> negotiations go, if you tell me you love a property and you, you want it at any price and it's okay to share that, then, then we're, we're going to get you that property. Normally the negotiations aren't that, aren't like that. No. I, I want you to get the, as, as a, as a buyer's agent, I want you to get the best deal. If you tell me I got to sell it at any price, I just got to get out from under it. And again, that's information that. Unless you tell me to share, we, we're not sharing it. It's, it's our no. policy that, that if we're on the buyer side, we're working hard to get, get the buyer the best, the best deal they can get. If we're on the seller side, we're working hard to get the, the seller the best deal they can get. If, if by chance we happen to work where we're 
on both sides, then we provide the same information, same CMA, same market information to both sides, and we don't advise on on what uh, what to offer, and we don't we don't share what what your low as a seller is or your high as a buyer is. That's correct. No, we do not. Know that when you're working with with other people's money, you've got to put their you've got a fiduciary duty to them. As an agent, we we don't look at what a listing pays. We don't look at what a, what's being offered to a buyer's agent. No, if there's a bonus or no bonus, that's our goal is to get the client the the best deal we can get them. That is always, and we I mean, of course, this is what we do for a living, but that's not the thing we look at. We just, we're trying to, to, if we have a listing, get the listing sold. If we have a buyer, get a buyer at the property that they're, they're going to love. So that's our goal. Yep. Um, so when, in regards to marketing, marketing like listings, we, we also hold, there are certain things that you're not supposed to throw out there. A lot of agents don't realize that, but there's a form for that. Right. You have to have permission to say certain things on in your marketing. And right, so it, it's the form is called a authoriz, authorization authorization to disclose adverse information. That and adverse information is information that would that would hurt your position when you're when you're negotiating. Yeah, like so, fixer upper or more importantly, short sell, short or, sell or, or motivated seller. Yes, those, those type term indicate that that there's something going on and that, that as a seller you need to to get out from under the property if that if those type terms any any term that that hurts a seller's position to to negotiate ha, any of those terms need to be approved terms by the seller right you as a seller need need to know what you're putting out there Yep. Know what your agent's putting out. And you as an agent, you have to have permission to put that on on in your advertising or on MLS. You can't, you, you have to, those terms have to be approved ahead of time. Right. Something like uh, investor special, that's not really a, a term that says, hey, I'm, I've got to get rid of this. It's a term that says, hey, the property needs some work. So think about what you're saying when you say it. Think about what, if you're a seller and you're you're reading the description, think about what it says. If you're a buyer and you read a description, think about what it says. It, it could be an it could be screaming opportunity. Yep, could be. So. Again, if you're uh, an agent or a buyer and or actually a seller and you want to know how we do our confidentiality, well, like what what um, our processes are, just you know, message us and let us, we'll, we'd be happy to share that with you. Kevin Goodman, Stacey Goodman, EXP Realty, the Goodman team. Thanks for joining us on our channel. If anything we've said has struck a chord with you, please like and subscribe to our channel. Links are below. Thank you.